Hello, this is Eldridge and Company. I'm Ronnie Eldridge. My partner in conversation today is my real life partner, Jimmy Breslin. He writes columns three times a week for the Newsday newspaper, and he writes books. His most recent book, The Short Sweet Dream of Eduardo Gutierrez, has just been released in paperback. It's a very good book, I have to say. I Excellent know. Book. It is. You know, I was thinking talk. about it today. What? It's really quite relevant. It shows what people will do to come to this country and what yeah. this country means to people in other parts of the world. Yes. In, in the case of the book, it's Mexico. Yeah. Mexico. Yeah. <clears throat> Not so much to Iraq today, I would right. suspect, but to Mexico right. it means quite a bit. It's a dream, the northern dream. We were talking today about what we were going to discuss, and yeah. we decided we are going to talk about free speech. Uh -huh. So what does that mean to you? That you can say anything you please in this country. Uh, it is a fact that we have free speech. There's no question about it. Spaces and everybody's of the country. And everybody's afraid to use it. Who's afraid? Everybody. Mm. Self-censorship. There's no real censorship. Uh, in all the years I've worked in the news business, I never heard, I never was told not to write anything or, or to say anything on the air. Oh, they tell you sometimes not to write something and you, no. you yell so much and stand up for no, it that they, they get... No, you make I mean, angry. somebody will ask you a question, you really think no. you should say that. Oh, well, that's different. You know. that's, that's what do you mean? I should, well, yeah, should well, I? you're asking my arrogance, but I have never had it. I think there's a lot of self-censorship as they're writing it. They say they might not like it or they look out, you know, here, not this, any television studio. I better look out what I say. They might not like it. They, I don't know who they is. You've been around a long time, right? Since, I mean, we talk no. about the fact that Westbrook Pegler, talk, talk about him a little bit. No. <laughs> well, he certainly he, spoke his mind, was, right? Yes. He and was people terrific. objected? Well, Murray Kempton and I always made him the best columnist ever to live. Why? And then he went crazy. Because he could use the language and he could excite you. And he was terrific. He wrote the one best column we ever read. And whenever anybody with Captain would say, who's the best you've ever read? He'd say, Westbrook Pegler. They think he's being perverse. Yeah. And it was, we, we meant it. Well, you wrote, a, you wrote about the times with, with um, uh, Damon Runyon. Yeah. I wrote a book about New York in his times. Right. Yeah. In those days, were people less afraid to express their opinions, especially in the newspapers? I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I've never heard in all my years anybody say that they, that they uh, killed a column or didn't let me write it. I never heard it. What, what happened with the Hearst Papers and the war? What was it? The, what war was that? The Spanish? Oh, well, they had that. I worked at the New York Journal American, 220 South Street. It's now the post printing plant, I guess, or it was. And uh, they had in the back of the sports department where I worked the Western Union office. They had, it came in on wires. There was no fax or teletype or uh, email then, and uh, it had an old, old copy of a telegram they had sent from that office to uh, Richard Harding Davis was in Havana for Hearst with Remington, the famous artist, and they had complained that there was nothing going on and they couldn't write anything, there was no war, and it said, the telegram said, Chief says, you do the stories, he'll take care of the war. <laughs> Signed, Willacombe. That was Hearst's assistant, Willacombe. And I, th that's the name. So what stories did he write? Who was that? Richard Hearst. Harding Davis? A no, thousand what did Hearst, of them. Hearst write? Hearst himself? Yeah. I don't know what he wrote. I know Richard Harding Davis, they wrote from Havana, they wrote a thousand stories. Yeah. I do, you, um, do you think that um, our elected public officials are, um, are not fully appreciating what free speech means, and if they were, would they be more outspoken about the current situation in the I, Middle East and Iraq? I think if they, if they had any idea of the qualities of blood, uh, if you take a needle when well, you're taking it out of your arm, and uh, if you've got some disease that you need testing all the time, or you, in the hospital you see it too, it, and it, it just doesn't come out right and the blood spurts, two blocks. Two, uh, two drops, that's all. Not a lot of blood, just two. They're, it goes everywhere. Four drops, it drenches the place. Now that blood, they can't, you've got to uh, scrub it and everything else. That blood, now let's measure it from the amount of blood in a baby who gets killed by a bomb in Baghdad, which they have been. That blood travels 
across mountains, across seas. It stops at London and drops on the floor. It goes to Washington. It goes to New York, and all of a sudden, people are looking, and they're washing their hands, and they can't get the blood off it. That's Lady Macbeth. How many times did she wash her hands doing that? Well, is this I know, the university? Who knows a, that? What we're saying is, uh, Lady <laughs> Macbeth. Unfortunately, big, they're not around here. You got a big university. How many times did Lady Macbeth wash her hands and, and, and couldn't I'm, get the blood off? And, I, and now yeah. you're showing me up for my no, lack no, no. of literary knowledge. No, but, I'm showing the school up. Nobody knows. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's but true. that's not what I'm talking about. I well, mean, that's, that's the, very poetic. No, it is a poetic. Very, it's and it's your soul, and it's 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 moralistic and. It's yeah. religious in a way. Yeah. But why haven't members of Congress, the Senate, why does New York State have two senators who haven't yeah. spoken yeah. a word yeah. except yeah. support yeah. of a war in Iraq? Yeah. Uh, why haven't other members of the legislature spoken no. out more? No. And if they had, would we be where no. we are? I don't know about that. I know that you, in the political business, it attracts half people. Well, there are no whole. You, you go, oh, you call yeah. Hillary Clinton whole? I, I you call Schumer whole? Come I want, on. I want everybody. Half. I want everybody on the screen to know that I spent 12 years in the city council, and I had to hear this kind of tirade all the time. Uh, but only, anyway, there's only one problem. Some with the political tirade, people are good, and some who, should who, more who, reflect who. it. Well, well, I mean, we've who, had some great leaders. Who? We have had. Who, who certainly, said anything? Teddy Kennedy is talking yeah. out. Certainly, put him aside. Yes, well, no question. But there are a few. Look at uh, Richard Bird. I mean, yeah. Robert Bird. Yeah, Robert Bird. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, that's just not fair to say that, but they've been so drawn into the system, and it seems to me in what you describe as self-censorship, that they're, they're so responsive to what they think polls are, and, and they are afraid to take on the president, or they think it's unpatriotic. I mean, I think that comes down to their inability to fully understand what free speech is mm -hmm. and the responsibility yeah. that free speech gives you is that you really should speak out with your yeah, opinion. Absolutely. Right. And I don't see how you're hurting anyone. Uh, uh, troops, they say you can't talk because you're not supporting the troops. Well, I'm supporting them. I, I, I walk around with a wince all week, every day, thinking of some 20-year-old kid from Roosevelt, Long Island, who's out there in the sand and is going to get shot. Well, I mean, I, and if I don't like that. Am I supposed to keep my mouth shut because, I, what, is that a good situation? I heard my, uh, the, the president today, I mean, uh, and he uh, talks, okay. period, they're, they're giving him a lot of opportunity to yeah, speak, yeah, and yeah. so the American public can yeah. hear him and yeah. be further. Without questions, yeah. Right, and be yeah. further uh, stirred with patriotism. Yeah. Uh, talk yeah. about the importance of bringing democracy to the people of Iraq yeah. and how we're going to get rid of yeah. the government and all yeah. of that. And I was wondering, if I was faced with a question, would I rather bring democracy to the people of Iraq or have my son home safe? No contest. And I have to tell you, I'd much rather have well, my son home safe. Now, I yeah. know that's selfish yeah. and everything, but where have we lost those thoughts and, and that, yeah. those feelings? And why do people have to suppress them if they have them? I don't know. They, they, they started by fooling everybody with these weapons of mass destruction. They're going to drop a... Uh, germs in Maspeth tonight. They've never defined that said. term, have they? I don't know what bombs. I don't know what they mean by it. I know there's been no action. Uh, activity on Iraq hasn't done anything, and they haven't found anything over there. But for weapons of mass destruction, we just dropped a bomb. They said proudly it was 4,500 pounds, and it blew women and children apart in Baghdad. And and planes that go certain ways, and rockets that yep. are de yeah. determined by computer we, and, and they precision don't have, bombing. And the other side doesn't have a plane. Right, so that is mm -hmm. really, yeah. But le but let's return back to well, free speech. North Korea it does. Right. Why don't they talk about and what's that? happening there? Why don't why, is it, why doesn't he attack North Korea in his speech as Bush? Why doesn't he claim they have weapons of mass destruction because they sure do? It seems to me that um, that question of free speech and free mm -hmm. expression yeah. that came under. A misunder there was a misunderstanding with the city at the first rally, the annual yeah. rally, when they yeah. wouldn't give a permit to there was march no before the UN. Standing. It was, it was, it was well, uh, then they got, they learned, or they were ashamed. No, they're not, they're not going to learn. And they Tell allowed a march. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we were there. Yeah. And it certainly was. Yeah. It's good. Quiet no cops, and yeah. peaceful, mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. great feeling mm -hmm. of support and everything until mm -hmm. the end of the march, and and until some of the people deliberately want to mm -hmm. provoke, and mm -hmm. that's their also their mm -hmm. right of free speech, yep. right? Yep. 
Um, so it's, it's the right to dissent and the importance of dissent mm -hmm. that we're talking about when we say free speech. But, you've but got it a goes beyond that. You've Doesn't got a it? police commissioner uh, has gone militaristic all of a sudden. This is a bright man and a nice guy, and I'm looking at him. I don't believe what I see. General Kelly is not a police commissioner anymore. Shouldn't even, I hate that title commissioner anymore. He's a police chief. And he, uh, uh, he's come in to you. He he's got overseas people to give us tips, national security, nuts. Take care of 42nd Street and do it with a minimum of noise and turmoil and we'll appreciate it very much. And he's not filling the role of a police chief, he's filling the role of something I don't know. And I don't think he knows either. And he best stop it because you will see it's an irritant. And Bloomberg is great and his friend and everything else, but someday somebody's going to say, this is a pain in the neck, let's change. Right, and then we'll have some problems. And you'll have somebody else come in. <laughs> but, um, and it should because this he is a does have to. I mean, they do have a responsibility of trying to protect the city from terrorism. Yeah, yeah. What, but, uh, what does that mean? Machine guns in the middle of Times Square? I no, don't know. it doesn't. And it well, seemed to me at the march that yeah. the provoc that that when they brought the the police officers yeah. in in riot gear, yeah. that that is more likely to provoke a an antagonistic well, response. We'll go into free speech. I'm tired of cops saying communist. I'm tired of cops looking sneer and look at this scum. I'm tired of them talking like that, and they should be told not to. Well, are you tired of Russ Limbaugh? I never heard. I, I, I must make a, a confession. I heard him for about three minutes once, and that's all. I mean, I'll put it on. I don't know who. I don't know anybody that listens to him. Or ever right. listen to him? But people must listen to him. They must listen to him. I think New York, United States of America is New York City, and then you go to the other coast, California and uh, Seattle and San Francisco, and all in between is Alabama. But that's part of the United States. No, I, I, that's why we ought to. We should have had our own place. Crazy. What do you mean we should have had? Well, I don't like their taste. I don't, that's all the low IQ states love uh, all this stuff. But we Alabama, can, Mississippi. But we can hardly. That's Louisiana. That's ref, that re, that gets reflected in your opinions about presidential candidates and yes. presidents from no. the, the South or well, from it, someplace it, else. They're good from the South if you could use them. Now it looked like you could use Clinton very well, but he fooled people. He was stayed in the middle. He didn't do very much. And then he gets in trouble with a broad, excuse me, with a young lady, and uh, blew the whole game. I think that uh, Bush fooled people also. Yes. I think yeah, that they, he was seen as an affable man yeah. and not yeah. really as right as the yeah. far right yeah, that yeah, supported yeah. him, uh -huh. and uh -huh. that that was deliberately cultivated uh -huh. in the campaign. Yep. yep, no question. Also, the Democrats had the one worst stumble bum ever put up in that go. I would still, it's a question no, in my don't, mind. No, please don't say that. Would I, I hear rather you. get no. blown up in Bush's war or have to sit and listen to Al Gore But talk? you don't really mean that, and you say that early in the what? morning when did, you, when you're you most rambunctious. But well, why don't you listen to Gore and see what you say? He, you don't like his voice, and I wish I we could I don't like hear. him as a guy. It's interesting that we haven't heard from him recently, and we should have, <laughs> even <laughs> though he's decided not to run for president. If, if he came out against the war, Jimmy, right? I'd get a rifle and go to war. I mean, that's how much I think of him. He's a degenerate. That's, right. that's really an exaggeration. No, it and isn't. I know that you, you do accentuate. Come on, no. smile a little bit. No, Listen up. Supposed you, to you have to be embarrassed that you're saying no. that, that you'd rather go to war than to listen to Al Gore. But. Close to true. <laughs> all right. But why hasn't Al Gore? Why hasn't Bill wanna, Bradley, who I support, I don't in the know campaign, why Bradley doesn't open his mouth. Why haven't people spoken Nobody, the only one out that more publicly? No, the only one that opened his mouth, as you write, is Kennedy. Bird does, but he's like a museum piece. Kennedy is vibrant, and Kennedy should be. Uh, Paul Wellstone certainly well, he, was, well, is missed. He yeah. would have spoken out. He didn't have the power Kennedy had. No, he doesn't. Kennedy's got the bang. Right. Terrible. Just you, terrible. Uh, the. Uh, um, Somebody can't swim on a night in Massachusetts and look what you got. It's a very sad thing. It's too bad. It cost a lot of lives. That poor young woman, when she drowned, she took a lot of people with her. I'll tell you that. Um, mm. Censorship. What about our civil liberties being mm -hmm. curtailed? Yeah. Does that tie into free speech? It's all the same. I don't see any difference between the two things. 
and it all comes back to the need for free speech because yeah. in a way yeah. it needs to be the balance to the people who are, have been elected to powerful office. And what's this other stuff, this embedding? What is that? Well, that's, that's an interesting what question. Is it? is it embed or in bed with? Uh, what is it with these? They put reporters with units. I thought the Times one day they had the insignia for the unit on the guy's story. That was the greatest. They took it off, but now I'm waiting to see if they're going to have ranks to write. Like, well, we uh, saw in the march be that a, a young woman had a hat on that was a bed with yeah. all the reporters yeah. the on it. So she like spelled that. it the other way. Yeah. It's, um, it's been interesting to see the protests, that they're yeah. not only protests about the war, they're not yeah. only protests about Bush, yeah. but they're protests about the media. Now, what, what are they complaining about? In bed with. They're not telling her. That, but what are they doing? They're in favor of a war. Well, they're, they've been put into very close, tight, frightening well, circumstances with, with certain uh, battalions or well, cavalry, well, whatever well, well, they're, well, the well, units they're done, assigned done. to. Wait a minute. Let me just explain. Right? But they're mm -hmm. not the only ones covering the war. Yeah. There are people who are covering mm -hmm. from Baghdad. Yeah. There are people from, from Washington. They're the anchors on the different television shows. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. why are they complaining about the media other than the embedding? Oh, I think the whole thing is, is, a, is a... Nobody protests. You don't see any, any sharp reporting on the part of the networks asking why we're here, what's this. Has one network asked where are the where were the weapons of mass destruction, which they parroted for so long. No, I, and as far as they're, they're in with, in frightening circumstances with the unit, yes, but war is always, when somebody's shooting, it's always frightening. And do me a favor, be frightened by your own, so I'll get your own uh, stories. I don't want you telling me of, a, of their fright that much. It's because um, I, I don't know what I don't know what's going on here, and I, I, all I get is a lot of stuff. We're with the hundred first. There's were, a guy on on the CNN Rogers. You ever watch him, Mad Dog Rogers? He thinks he's Patton. We're here. We're going in. We're set. I, I look. I, I can't. And the use of the we. Now you don't. That means you're equating yourself with it. that 22 year old from Rosedale, Queens, who's going to get shot. You're saying we. As if you're sharing his whole danger. Every, well, they are. They're, they're not supposed to attack you. So, so we. do you think this was an intentional yeah. move on part of the administration? Well, if they Did, like it, are they you know smart, But Are they smart enough to have thought that if we have this principle yeah, of yeah, embedding, yeah, yeah. then we're co-opting? Yes, certainly. You were in Vietnam. Now, that was an entirely different way of reporting. Yeah. What happened there? I, I, don't, I don't remember. I mean, there was a lot more picking at it and arguing and, and saying, what is this? Well, how did you move around there? Two feet. That's it. Hitched rides on planes, hitched rides, but always alone. You didn't go with anybody. And did the, Army, the, the Air Corps Force or whoever it would take you on to the Air Force planes and you were able to move freely on a... Yeah, and the leave you off at some place. Da dang, play cool. A helicopter ride, get out, and you're on your own. Do you That's think that reporters went. also got caught up with the war there, or were most of them disaffected? Well, there was a lot of reporting against that war from people there. And I, I did one with, I, I still remember to this day, with Samuel Vaughan Wilson. He was a lieutenant, he wound up as a lieutenant general, the, the liaison between the Pentagon and the White House. A great fellow. He, he was in the original Merrillsville Orders. He went in with piano wire in Indochina. We were in a town called Fonthiet, and the streets were made of sand, and he said that Fa this was the first place where Ho Chi Minh ever taught, ever, ever ta taught school, and the French wouldn't give him textbooks. So he drew the lessons in the sand. He says, they wouldn't give him textbooks. He says, could he be an opponent? He says, could he be mad? So he said, they can't win this war with a bullet. And that went back to Washington, and everybody screamed and yelled that they thought he was a traitor. He was such a traitor, they couldn't wait for him to come back. He was the only one telling the truth. Well, can we win the war? Can we win the war with the parts of the third world that are convinced that they're... Oh, we, yeah, we're going to do great. White uh, uh, Americans well, taking we're... over countries with... Uh, People who are white, and we're going to boss them. We're going to run. We steal their oil. 
which of course will do. I mean, that's, you're going to be immensely popular, bombing women and children. It's good. It's good. When you say white, you mean the people in power. Well, us. Yeah. Mm. Good. Stiff, white, Protestant, the Christian, the Ray. I, the, the other thing that I remember when I was very young, <laughs> during the Second World War, I will never forget Pearl Harbor Day, and mm -hmm. also President Roosevelt then speaking to Congress, mm -hmm. and the declaration of war. Mm -hmm. So we got mm -hmm. to the Vietnam War, what happened there? They shot at the, uh, the, the ship in the Gulf of Tompkins. They didn't, but they announced that they mm -hmm. did. That was it, and, and they got a resolution through. They got a resolution that yeah. said what? That we're, uh, we're, we've got to retaliate. I don't know what But it, it wasn't said. a declaration of war. No, no. And no. this time the president goes in September, I think yeah. it was. and got a thing. And yeah. got this carte yeah. blanche, really, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It's a very, uh, and we talk about the war, but the, but the Constitution. <sighs> Look, there's one part a, of free speech they don't ever want to talk about, and that it must have a measure of anger to it. If you don't have anger, you don't have a game. Now, there's no free speech in the, in the way these people use it. Soft, compliant, bowing. There's no harshness to it. There's some harshness. These kids uh, were out in the street, blocking the street. It looks terrible. It's crazy. It's everything else. But it's got a measure of anger to it that nobody else has. Well, it's a very, that, I was also thinking about that today. Civil, civil disobedience is a very interesting tool. Well, I mean, yeah. Gandhi started, right? Yep. Um, mm. We used it, it was used to its ultimate benefit during the Civil Rights Movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have interesting stories of being down mm -hmm. south and watching sit-ins at lunch There's encounters. A, on Queens Boulevard, Johnny McGuire's looking at the television in the saloon, and he sees uh, King was arrested and not doing anything, and he, he looked at him and he says, cannot lose. It was at the very start. He says, it's Gandhi, he's going to murder them with that act. He this says, I'd like to make a bet on you know, him. He with, owned a Bar he owned a bar, but he, he yeah. knew. He took one look at the guy. He says he cannot lose, but, and that was it. And those, but that was against laws. Yeah. Right. Then we oh, got southern law. Yeah, mm. southern laws mm. and a lack of other laws. But mm. that was against mm. laws. Sitting yep. in at a lunch counter that was oh, only for whites. Oh, oh, when they brought those dogs up right. in a tight lunch counter with right. about ten dogs on you. Yeah. And you say you used to count the people that they oh, arrested. The big thing. Biggest, most important story I've ever, we've ever done, or I've ever done. When they, when they got arrested and they put them in these big police vans, you counted every head going in. And they'd look at you sometimes for some solace. And I said, I can't even look at you with your, uh, be nice with my eyes. I got to count the heads. So there's 116 went in. They shut the doors. Now you run to the court and you wait and wait, and 116 better come out. And if they don't come out, Whoever don't come out is dead, you know, when you had it. But and that kept the cops at bay. When they saw that pad and pencil, it was a stronger weapon than a gun. Then, uh, then taking the civil disobedience and mm -hmm. how often it's been mm -hmm. used, then the women burned bras in Atlantic mm -hmm. City, mm -hmm. that's always extreme, and yeah. we're still suffering from that because yeah. some people say, well, I would never do that, I'm not a feminist. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the Vietnam War mm -hmm. and burning, a, not so much the burning of draft cards, because that was a symbol, yeah. but of people who refused to serve and who mm -hmm. were put into jail mm -hmm. or who left the country and went to Canada. That was mm -hmm. all civil disobedience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you went to burning of the flag, mm -hmm. which makes people crazy. Yeah, but right? it's meaningless. But it's meaningless, but it's right. a symbol. It certainly gets attention. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to holding up, disturbing the general public's routine, which is really what mm -hmm. should happen mm -hmm. during a war mm -hmm. that's an undeclared war mm -hmm. by a president, some people say, was not really elected. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you had all of this civil disobedience and these high numbers of arrests in San Francisco. Mm. And what I've heard is that New York was far behind in joining this movement. And so yesterday was the first day mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. that kind of civil disobedience. And mm -hmm. I think we'll see more of it. But what it is is supposed to be symbolic. And mm -hmm. it may be shocking to some people, but it is legitimate well, under freedom, free speech. It's a legitimate. Is it as shocking as silence? I was arrested. Yeah. For civil disobedience, remember? Yep. Yeah, he came to jail to bail me out, <laughs> and I got released on my own recognizance. Uh, but those are all techniques mm -hmm. used to get mm -hmm. people's attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important way of expressing yeah. free speech, right? It's indignation well, or it's, anger. It's, it's certainly uh, anything is better than silence. 
It can, we can come back to the concept of blood because I also always think of the Berrigans. Yeah. And remember when they went into some Department of Defense yeah, or something and, and threw blood, blood yeah, all over yeah. documents. Yeah, yeah but that, so, was, that was thrown from here. This blood is coming on your hands from a, a major crime of which you're an accomplice. What right amazes here. me is this is a yeah. time when such sophisticated uh, technological advances Hmm. And this is, war is such a primitive hmm. thing. Well, and that's that combination you're with all of these people. highly technical things that we've hmm. developed yeah. and this primitive concept hmm. of war and then hmm. of talking about sportsmanship and war. Well, they're cheating the other people. They, they, right. they hold up a white flag and then they shoot. Right. They don't have a plane. We've got the skies covered with planes that are bombing and shooting at them. And they cheat, they hold up a flag, then they shoot. It's terrible. So what is your contribution to this effort to, to change the world and stop this kind of conflict? The usual thing I do every day for all my life, get up in the morning and go to work. You get up in the morning and, and talk go, a lot. Go to an honest Early day's in the morning. Work. Tell uh, us what, what time do you get up? At 4.30, <laughs> 4 o'clock. And you don't like it because it's lonely. Yeah, and I'm doing, I've got three columns a week to do, and I'm doing a book on the Catholic Church. In the meantime, they're bombing. Incidentally, there was a bad break for Polanski, the director. He wins the, they were hoping to get him into the country based on winning the pianist and Adrian Brody. They needed that part of it. And he won. He won the Oscar. So you got everything. But now the Catholics went and loused it up. With all this sexual abuse, you can't slip an honest uh, uh, pedophile back into the country. He's gone. It killed him. It's true. Well, <laughs> that's a very good way of ending this program. It's a true story. Is, real life truth. Yeah. Is your book, uh, when is that going to be finished? Yesterday, the agent called, the editor called, and the publisher called. I think it should be finished soon or else. Well, That's thank about you. What it says. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Oh, it was and nice of me. It was I nice was of you told. to come, and I'll um, look forward yeah. to uh, more conversations. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good.